Okay, so we are approaching the finale of this, except did we get the key code we need, uh, the, the whatever we needed to uh, disable the, the thingy things down here? Do we have what we need? Gee, freaking game. Ah. Do we have what we need for this wall terminal? Shut down security bots. Oh, it worked. All right, can we open this up? up? I thought I had the correct thing. It's, it's just hard. I should be able to theoretically do it. Success! Oh, hey. What's up? I got the door open. Did you? For reals? <laughs> Let's go in then. And about our agreement? As far as I can tell, you've done your part, mate. As promised, you can take as many fuel cells from the bunker as you can. We'll be down there bringing pumps online. Cheers. All right. Did he just disappear? I guess he did. I hope he didn't notice how I killed everybody. All right, they're just like this, and um. Oh, hey, what's up? I already picked it. So, hey, I found out where the superintendent's Get office out is. Here. Really? Well, so. I was in there already. It's upstairs, not sure how I can get in though. I know how to get in. Well, there's the obvious route, the elevator. But I guess that's locked. You know, there should be service access there. I know VR suits had both the elevator and service slash emergency exit to the skywalk. Maybe you could open that door. Skywalk? What's that? Oh, you don't know? Man, that's one of the attractions here. You can step out on the Krogus roof to gaze at the stars and enjoy the open space. You can get there through one of the stairways and the, either of the promenade entrances. He makes it sound like looking at stars is something special in space. Alright, buddy. Alright, I already did that, so never mind, actually. Hey, do you have any idea what was what is this card I found? You'd show a card that you that has the same symbol on the back as the badge on his chest. Edzuz suddenly seems a lot more engaged. That is a card from the game called For the Adventure and Glory, the Siege, or Fag for short. This is actually a spin-off game for the popular Fag tabletop role-playing game. Tell me more about this game. It is a simplistic and unfair collectible card game. It was created to squeeze profit out of fag fans and attract a more casual and maybe younger audience. Sounds harsh. Unlike many card games, this has little to no strategy involved. Pretty much the player with the biggest and strongest deck is guaranteed to win unless he makes a mistake. If you want to win, you must buy more booster packs to get more and stronger cards. The more money you spend, the more likely you are to win. But an experienced player with great skill can turn it around, right? No, you can win with a stronger opponent only if he makes a mistake. Or she. Okay. I am sorry, woman fag players are rarer than golden dragon. <laughs> what the f- What is a- Okay, is that a saying in some language? Do, do you say something is rarer than a golden dragon? Anyways, how about a game? Let me grab my travel deck. <laughs> he has one. <laughs> He has one! Uh, I am ready. Then let's go. Let's set this game up. Shuffles items around. Uh, okay. Draw your stick. Shortest goes first. Present you with two fag branded, <laughs> branded sticks to choose from. Oh my god. Alright, give me the right one. You open the game. Uh, place your minions by the gate. I don't know. Lizard men. Lizardman card. It has spear-wielding uh, reptilians and its power rating is zero. You play Lizardman card. Lizardman siege v sees the gate. Look at his cards. Edzu selects one of his cards and plays it. Wolves card. Uh, Edzu's wolves beat your Lizardman and are now holding the gate. Hmm. Troll card. Power rating five. Hiding deep in the forest. Play troll card. You play troll card. Your troll beats Edzu's wolves and are now holding the gate. Look at his cards. Edzu select from his cards and plays it. Uh, plays troll card. Edzu's troll beat your troll and are now holding the gate. Okay, let's play the Wololoo. 
Willa Lucard wears an old man in a long dark robe with a curved staff. Yada yada yada, we read that. Play Willa Lucard. Your sorcerer starts reciting magical words that turn the minds of Edzo's minions. They switch their allegiance. Now there are your trolls guarding the gate. And your turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, he plays another troll card. I guess I have to play the dragon card now. Um, right. An ultimate impersonation of terror, ancient magic and arcane power. Dragon can easily sweep away armies of men with a single blast from its lungs. Its power rating is 8. You play dragon card. You play your dragon card, beat Edzu's troll and are now holding the gate. You won. Congratulations. So I guess I just had to have this dragon to win. The treasure chest is yours. <laughs> uh, GG, want a rematch or yes, I beat you. Let's go for GG. My pleasure. Really? Where's the, where's the treasure chest? Do I really get a treasure chest? Treasure... Treasure chest... I guess it was just a saying or something. Can I play another game? How about a game of fag? <laughs> Let's do it. And, um... You know what? I'm gonna just play the dragon card. Yes, okay. Oh, my vo his wolves actually do beat my dragon? That is insane. <sighs> okay, Vululu. Time for Vululu. Oh, I won again? That's weird. Uh, I beat you. Dance. Yay. <laughs> Funny guy. Alright, so there's two computers in here. There's... Oh, this is a fuel... Wait, no. This is a pump controls and this is also pump controls. Let's interact. Seems that pump system is still fully functional even after all these years. Return! And... That's it. Oh yeah, what are these? Kiosk. Huh? Buy. What? Okay, whatever. Yeah, we haven't been in this section yet. Let's go. And we have a Facu Man. Let's talk to a Facu Man. Hello there, I am Facu Man. Ask me anything. Okay, this is something we should have done in the way early beginning. Perception, examine. In front of you is a typical interactive touchscreen stand with a built in AI assistant, sole purpose of whom is to provide answers to all the boring and basic questions staff of a ship has already been asked a million times. It supports a huge Askai smile and Southern American accent of all the things. What? 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 Alright, I'll select a question. Don't be shy, friend, ask away. Where am I? Yeehaw! That's m that must have been a crazy night if you don't know where you ended up, eh, partner? This is Space Station Krogus, possibly most fun place in the belt, and I am not just saying that. This literally is one of its main functions. Can you believe it, sport? Because Earth is so far, Perkson's LTD created a hub for miners to unwind after hard days of our month's work. Ha! <laughs> While mostly renowned for its bustling non-stop night party on the promenade, Korogus is actually a very convenient meeting place as it is literally in the middle of a region. It is also a logistics outpost where ships can drop off and pick up cargo at any time. And finally, this is a refueling station that keeps shuttles and local routes running. How do the toilets, space toilets work? I see you got your priorities straight, sport. Barfroom on this ship and most of other modern spaceships is a multifunctional, self-contained sealed capsule that provides poopy and pee, pee disposal as well as shower. Even at the same time if you feel inclined so. That all is done in the name of efficiency and preservation of resources. The capsule recycles all the fluids on the spot. It's a closed system, so don't worry, we won't run out of water for shower if you know what I mean. Ha 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 ha! But, um, the microgravity and our um, poopy? Ah, yes. As most of the things, pee pee and poopy would float in space and that would be unsanitary. Since we cannot realistically feed you with magnetic powder to ensure your poop sticks to metal, haha, <laughs> capsule employs power of suction to guarantee that disposed substances go where they should. You can say that it sucks! Get it? Haha! <laughs> that was great. Why is there gravity on this ship? 
Excellent question, buddy. You'd expect to be floating while in space, and rightfully so. The gravitational pull this far away from Earth or any other planet is very small. In fact, we call it microgravity. However, this would make traveling in space very cumbersome and uncomfortable. That's why good people of Percon LTD invented a way to simulate gravity while in space. Remember when you came aboard, staff insisted that you wear only special clothes made out of cosmetic fabric and heavy space shoes? Turns out this is uh, part of the trick to reasonably effectively simulate gravity. You see the clothes and especially the shoes, they are all magnetic. And floors all around the ship, metallic or magnetic as well. And what do magnets do? Exactly, they stick together. Magnetic soles uh, ensure that you can walk even if somehow awkwardly upright and not float away, while clothes help you stick to the chairs and, most importantly, bed. The same principle of magnetism is applied to most of the uh, utensils, tools, containers and everything else. Otherwise, all those things would float around and get stuck in some unwanted places. So this is how gravity works here. Do you have any more questions? Fire away if so! How is fuel stored on spaceships? Very specific question, my dear Greenhorn, but a valid one. Poorly devised fuel containers was the cause for many space accidents initially. That's why nowadays you won't find huge cisterns of explosive propellant. Instead, the fuel is kept in separate, relatively small vessels, sometimes even with safety distance between them, all to prevent loss of the whole fuel supply in case of a single structural integrity breach or to avoid devastating explosion. Why is there such low-tech equipment everywhere? When Percon LTD decided to go and mine asteroids, it was clear that miners and their equipment will have to spend a lot of time far, far away from Earth and any supplies. The equipment had to be both extremely dependable and easy to repair. That is why everything is bigger and clunkier than it needs to be. There's plenty of reserve built in. The high-fidelity screens gave way to the low-tech e-ink displays that consume only a fraction of power and would last for centuries. Additionally, equipment is organized into self-sufficient modules that do not necessarily need a grid to function. For example, every single computer terminal functions... For example, every single computer terminal includes its own power source, so-called atomic battery, and functions as a server that automatically replicates data as soon as connected to whatever ship net, net uh, as soon <coughs> as soon as connected to whatever ship net network connected by independent peer to peer links they can effectively function and retain 90% data even if 70% of nodes are gone or disconnected cool fuck you off have a nice day and don't forget to fuck you. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, we did the welcome desk already. Can we go downstairs here? Uh, game, stop crashing, please. Alright. Whoops, no I don't. Oh yeah, here we are. There should be an employee database and stations, blah blah blah. Here we are, the terminal is over there. Let's see, comes here, comes here. Here you are, all right, here is a bed and a locker in the communal bedroom below, space dock north. I guess that's where we're heading next. Let's see what's inside that locker. Communal bedroom? I guess it was silly to expect that he had uh, such luxury as his own room. There should be a dormitory somewhere for the station staff, I guess. Okay, so that's where we're going. Okay, surveillance terminal, here we are. Let's interact with that if we can. Check sensors. Most of the cameras are either down or display moving through dark narrow corridors. One showing some kind of shop interior. But on one screen we already took them down. I mean, my buddies did. Uh, labeled promenade, there's a group of four to five people interacting with some kind of door. Okay, fine. Alright. Supermarket guard is pretty much dead now. We took care of every freaking bot on the whole map, so this is old news. Well, I guess I'm just gonna drop off some of the stuff I got. Gasoline. Oh, here we are. Now we can interact with that. 
Welcome to the Bulta shuttlecraft. Note this shuttlecraft can be used by authorized personnel only. Make sure you have a correct key fob or on before you try to access the ship. Wait. Refuel. Wait. Refueled. Uh, radio comms. Hello, is that you, Captain? No, this is sentient squid from outer space. I'm not gonna troll him. Yes. Why are you calling? Is everything alright? No, I am Captain, and for some reason I am also the fool who's jumping from one derelict space junk to another. Uh, yes, okay, we're gonna just say it's okay. Oh, there's a screen slate. I think that's what was the interesting part. Do I talk about the screen slate to her now? All I can find was the screen slate. Well, it's something. Let's try to log in. Uh, apparently he went to the VR suite. Uh, got it. Um, I got the keycard. And uh, let's go to that console. Right, so basically I did many I did many of the steps already and kind of skipped stuff. Try the card. Wait. She managed to do it. And we're we're freaking done with her. Finally, finally she will not be getting stuck anymore. Oh, hey. What's up? Did I say we have to necessarily pick the lock? As long as we get in. I don't care how. Right. Listen, if there's a lock, it means there's a key as well. Someone here had to have a key card to open this door. Last time we were here, mind you, a couple of decades ago, there was a superintendent. She ran things here, was on top of everything. If you ask me, I'd find her office and look there. If I knew, I wouldn't be talking to you. Listen, I'll be honest with you. I think getting that keycard is a long shot. Seriously, if it isn't lost, or with someone who left the station 20 years ago, and it really is in that office, that's probably locked hard as well. But if you want to try anyway, one possible place to start would be the Krogus welcome desk. One of the spaceports is for the general public, and that has a welcome desk. There was probably a receptionist working back in the day. Maybe there's a station plan or some clue to find the superintendent's office. Well, we already found the office. Our main issue is getting into a fuel bunker. Actually, we are in the fuel bunker, aren't we? What is here? What is there? What? Why? I, I really want to see. Oh. I can just come down here, so I don't even need to open this door. Whoops. Alright, let's have a little fun. What is going on? Don't touch the... jeez. Okay, I have a feeling that we have to attack the sky... attack. Uh... Rip. doesn't seem to want to fight. Rip. Alright, I'll just exploit this. I'll just exploit this uh, bug that apparently he's having. Flash. Whoa. Whoa, how did that happen? I think it was another bug. It's not supposed to have like a hundred and three damage. Minor spacesuit. Spidris engineer ID, that's nice. 
Main door key card may be useful. Let's use it. Minor spacesuit. More. Yeah, that's better for the armor. But maybe with the keys we have now, I can open this stupid container. Yeah, I can't. Huh. Maybe I could just board the ship. So what about the helm? Helm can be used by authorized personnel only. Make sure you have a correct key fob on you before you try to access a ship. Well, do I have a correct... What, what, what's that? Welcome, Captain. Authorization successful. Take off. As you try to launch, ship suddenly starts shaking and loses power, sputtering dramatically. Something is wrong. You cannot take off. Yep, that's because I put the... Uh, took the thing from there and put it somewhere else. I guess I'll have to get that then. There, the fuel regulator. So let me just put the fuel regulator back. And launch. And take off. You initiate the launch sequence, suddenly you send slight tremors through the ship's fuselage and then feel as if the ground is shifting away underneath your feet. You, you see station pulling back as the ship takes off. Fly away. And so the story about the young, inexperienced captain that got its ship hijacked on his first trip had come to an end. Uh, extreme circumstances required extreme measures. Somehow you ended up leaving the station with a different ship than the one you had arrived on. Even though you came to the station with a simple goal of procuring more fuel, you ended up with the elusive fuel chip on your hands as well. Actually like 8 or 16 of them. As you hurry back to your ship, you learn that unfortunately there has been a development already. Losing the ship destroyed all their plans though. The mother load of fuel was now utterly useless. Despair and depression set in. I wonder what is waiting for me at my ship. Now this demo has four different endings, or at least variations, so we're gonna try some alternatives. For example, what if we actually use the ship we came on? Alright, I feel like uh, annihilating Ingrid. Slash. Slash. Mm, engineer ID. Fuel bunker, security terminal, keycard. I can't believe... Janka is actually helping me now, fighting them. This is insane. Alright. Please don't shoot me. Oh. Thank you. Out. Okay. We managed once again. Let's loot them all. Oh. Edzu's locker key, that's what I want. I think that's what I want. Well, let's see what his dark secret is. Oh, it's just card, 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 card. Oh, so lame. Yeah, this was definitely not intended for him to die over. Uh, this was for the pickpocketers among us. Alright, finally, uh, finally it is time to get rid of him. <gasps> I can finally attack. Okay, slash. Okay, I'm... I got rid of him. The only benefit, I think, is to be able to go through crawl spaces now. And less bugs. <gasps> oh, there's a soldering iron right here. I must have dropped it earlier. Finally. Alright, let's construct a freaking... Spidris key fob? I don't think we need this. Oh my god. <laughs> Please contact game developer. Uh, what's going on here? Are you freaking kidding me? 
Oh my god, it's all... Um... Right. Okay. Let's build... Remote Interceptor. Success. Okay, I guess that is just a weapon. Interceptor device intended to take over a bot without authorization must be targeted precisely and cannot be reused. Okay, so uh, I killed all the bots, so never freaking mind. That is not exciting. And the fob we can do how? Alright. Spoofing device for the spaceship Speditis. No, it should recognize this device as real key fob and give you full access. Well, I already had that. So I guess that's it. Right, and if I fly away again, with all them dead, it still pretends that there were people left on the station. Oh well, a little bit anticlimactic, but let's get the heck out of here. Off we go! And so the story about the young, inexperienced captain that got its ship hijacked on the first trip had come to an end, and for everyone involved, life moved on. The thing with the ship getting hijacked, that's from the first demo, which I guess many people playing this will have no clue about. You know what, I like the art, it's kind of cool. Well, it took some effort and a bit of time, you'd... yeah, quite some time. But you did manage to get the fuel and continue your, your quest. Also, I got a freaking fuel chip, so I don't even need to get one from wherever I wanted to go. Even though you came to the station with a simple goal of procuring more fuel, you ended up with the elusive fuel chip on your hands as well. Yeah, we're getting a, you know, fallout-like ending here. As you hurry back to your ship, you learn that unfortunately there has been a development already. Losing the ship destroyed all their plans, though. The mother load of fuel was now utterly useless. Despair and depression set in. They couldn't launch because I took one of the chips, even though they had so many? Is that what it is? That was cool, buggy. There's some grammatical problems. I wonder how well this game uh, will scale, because you know balancing is freaking hard in RPGs. And I got one of the endings. Station is left abandoned. There's three other endings. Maybe I'll come back to that. Check out my Jagged Alliance videos if you're into that, and check out my Fallout 1 slash 2 videos if you're into that. Actually, not Fallout 1 and 2, I actually look at mods of Fallout 1 and 2 instead. Anyways, hope to see you next time. Until then, ciao.